Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we are going to talk about vaccines, what the different kinds are, how they work, and how to make them. Vaccines are our best defense against viruses. Been using them for many years. What they do is they mobilize our immune system and they block or prevent virus infections. And that's because of immune memory, a concept we've talked about before. And vaccination breaks the chain of transmission. As you'll see, you need a certain fraction of the population to be immune to break the chain of transmission. And that's what vaccination does, particularly relevant for a brand new virus like we have now. No one's immune. It would be nice to have a vaccine to break that chain. Unfortunately, we don't have one yet. Vaccines are part of the anti-infection medicine and other factors, public health measures, sanitation and so forth, that have dramatically lengthened the average life expectancy uh, in the U.S. since the 1900s. It has consistently risen. So now males and females can live, expect to live between 70 and 80 years of age. This blip right here, this downturn, the 1918 influenza pandemic which killed many, many people globally. I wonder if we'll see a downtick in 2020. How vaccines work, they stimulate a protective immune response. They induce memory. And just to remind you about that, here we're looking at antibody and T cells on the y-axis, time on the X. You have your first infection. After about seven to 14 days, you have an adaptive response, antibodies and T cells. That wanes eventually to low but detectable levels. And then many years later, you can have a reinfection with the same, with the pathogen against which you were vaccinated. You will mount a very rapid and strong immune response, which will be able to protect you. And this is a seven to 14 day delay in the generation of antibody and T cell responses. And that will protect you against infection. So you'll have a mild or an inapparent infection. And for many viruses, this lasts years. If it doesn't last years at high levels, it may still be enough to protect you from severe disease. First vaccine that we know of was developed by Edward Jenner in 1796, who uh, found that women who milked cows were not likely to get smallpox. And smallpox was a scourge at the time, infected many, many people globally it had a very high fatality rate. And he noticed these milkmaids didn't get smallpox. But of course, he didn't know anything about viruses. He just noticed that. So he decided to take one of the pustules from a milkmaid. They would get cowpox from the cow-related virus, but not smallpox. He inoculated a young boy with it. And then two weeks later, he challenged the boy with smallpox, which was just a pustule from a smallpox patient. They didn't know anything about virus. And the boy was protected. Good thing he waited two weeks. From that point on, his vaccine began to be distributed globally in many different countries. Uh, in 1885, Pasteur developed a rabies vaccine. That was the next vaccine developed. Again, we still don't know anything about viruses. We just know there's something there that makes people sick and we can give it to people and protect them. And he, he introduced the term vaccination because vaca means cow in Latin in honor of Jenner, who did his studies with cows. And uh, that vaccine, that smallpox vaccine, has been used to this day. It's, uh, smallpox, of course, was eradicated in 1979, but I received this smallpox vaccine as a child. If you're in the military, you will still get one in case of bioterrorism using smallpox virus. The vaccine is delivered in this bifurcated fork, a small drop of vaccine is placed there and it's scraped into your skin where it really, really replicates well. And of course, the inflammation caused by the scraping uh, gives you a really good adaptive response. And I still have a scar. Everyone will get a scar from this and I can still see mine. Next vaccines didn't come until the 1930s, by which time we know about viruses, yellow fever and influenza vaccines. However, when Jenner's vaccine was released in the 1700s, immediately the anti-vaxxers rose to the fore. And here is a cartoon drawn back then, the cowpox or the wonderful effects of the population. People thought you would grow cow parts. Your arm where they put the vaccine. 